Here's what's hot right now at PodcastOne.com. Steve Austin's always shooting the proverbial shinola with wrestling stars, MMA stars, hot chicks, sometimes people like you on the phone. But the one thing we know about Steve is he dedicates every episode of the Steve Austin Show to the working man. You'll get to hear all the strange and unique thoughts that bounce around his skull of mine. Check it out for yourself. Go to PodcastOne.com. That's PodcastONE.com. PodcastOne.com presents the Ask Women Podcast, Uh a place where two female comics and a professional wing girl get together to dissect the female mind. You don't know how I feel. And explain it to men in terms they can actually understand. Booze. Now, here's the lovely ladies of Ask Women. Hey guys, welcome to the Ask Women Podcast, where you get real advice straight from the source. I'm your host, uh, Kristen Carney, comedian and uh, self-deprecator. Here with me, um, we have, of course, Marnie Kinris, the awesome best-selling author and relationship Hello. expert. Boop, boop. And then Haley White, the comedic actress and the writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we were just chit-chatting about how much we bought on Amazon this weekend. Um, yeah. I think we're the only ones supporting yeah, us. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we're basically keeping ourselves in business. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. It's fine. We're getting- I money mean, back it's fantastic right the only thing i can't buy is like a bride but everything else is pretty much on there a bribe a bride a mail oh. order i mean that's the only thing that i feel like is off limits at this I'm, point anything you want is it, there if amazon you can order through them like to china then they definitely have brides available they oh, might sure. <laughs> yeah like uh, amazon russia brides yeah brides. Definitely, <laughs> definitely i just ordered um i'm a total dweeb and i get like very nostalgic for my childhood even though like i didn't like most of it um but uh, i ordered anne of green gables which is <gasps> the classic like am- classic. amazing <laughs> i just dropped my chair Marnie just dropped sorry it. oh anne of green <laughs> that's how shocked i was i by know anne of green super gables. boring sorry mo oh that's why you were asking before is it because yeah. it's canadian it's it's canadian it's oh, in prince edward that island show. Freaking yeah freaking amazing so i thought of marnie but anyway if you guys ever want to get anything that is like from your childhood you can find it yeah. on Amazon that's why I like, like it so I much. think our guys are probably going to order Pride of, Pride and Prejudice next right? oh for right. sure you that's know? their first order after this <laughs> some, podcast some Legos so we're, we're going to make um, an Ask Women Recommends page that's going to be jam packed with Ooh. everything like all the essentials that guys will need so books condoms and they sell them on there yeah. uh, paper towel obviously Pride and a Pride exactly and a whole bunch Humility. of other things so Maybe that oils. is coming soon yes Ooh, oils and if you guys have any <laughs> Mo, suggestions I'm sorry, but Mo does not need more oils. <laughs> yeah, yeah you are oily. looking kind of shiny today. You I mean, in a good way. No, I it is shiny. Uh, no, I think Mo looks really hot today. I'm I into like the preppy look. Olive oil soap. What? Like what? I, I ship soap from uh, which I couldn't get on Amazon. Uh, I ship soap from like Greece. No, you and it's don't. made out of pure olive oil. You import soap? Like, yeah. If Mo had hair, it would be so greasy and oily. <laughs> it totally would. <laughs> like the, the curly and kind of yeah. like, like almost like a, it's, it's totally a good thing you're bald. Uh, I, I look like this guy Razor Ramon, who was like this wrestler with just a Jerry curl. Yeah, I was gonna say you look like a Jerry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my just God, like that perfect is that curl. Well, so I, yeah, Marnie was on Suicide Radio. Suicide yeah, Girls Radio. the Suicide Girls Radio. So okay, for for those of you who don't know, and I don't even know if you guys know su- the Suicide Girls. Girls. I'm gonna I'm like totally an act- screw this okay, up. Okay, by though. the way, I'm like an actual suicide girl. Like what do you at some mean? point, like, I'm you gonna have kill no myself. Oh, go, stop it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> That's not what these girls represent. They uh, okay. I'll, I'll do my best job of describing. I should have Wikipedia it, but the they, they are girls. non-traditional um, pinup and 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 uh, sexy women. They're showing that non-traditional women can be sexy. You don't have to be blonde with big breasts and um, and I don't know what else is. Do you have to have sexy. tattoos? Yes, but it's like tattoos and piercings and things that aren't traditional sexy that in my mind are actually like super sexy bigger and you don't have any tattoos you're just kind of like get a tattoo do you need know. to have them no, that's, that's a thumbs up that's no, a no. Thumbs up. then you're out you're out of suicide you're out you, have of to be, you still have to you have to be edgy right so it's, you still have to be like super skinny model-esque if you have no tattoos no, no you don't you can be big actually we, we have we have Bruin coming on the second part of our show who is a suicide girl and actually let her let her chime in for two seconds to just say what the suicide girls are so I don't screw it up come on in girl um, you can be whoever you don't have to have tattoos or piercings oh. as long as you live like an alternative lifestyle in some by way. alternative do you mean like lesbian I mean, sure, if okay. you want to be. Wow. No, not you me. Mean yeah. fun. No, just got a boner. I just got a boner. <laughs> yes, and you can be however big or small. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. awesome. Okay, so I like them even more now. I saw them for the first time on um, Real Sex, and then that's Friday. where I that's where I um wh- I was so mesmerized. I watched the Real Sex, and I I mean I couldn't the take HBO my eyes off. show, right? What oh, is yeah. that show? Oh, it's amazing. How it's is about this? Real sex things. Actually, it was it was the Suicide Girls, and then it went into yeah, no, I baby know what, sex land or something like oh. that. Like people who are 
have a fetish of dressing up like babies. And there was this, this, <laughs> it was insane. It's horrifying. My husband walked on in on me oh watching this and he was like, what are you doing? And then, and then it's clown just orgy. Who, yeah, it's just like the these people who dress up one? like babies and they have like big um, strollers and like they, they play in a, pl- it's, it's very Honestly, strange. the Suicide Girls is the most normal thing you'll see on real sex. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But I thought it was fascinating. I was like, I want to be one of those. Girls. I really thought that because they just seemed so empowered and wonderful and beautiful at the same time. And they were all alternative girls who, you know, like to do different types of things, which I, I really admired. But so I was on the Suicide Girls uh, radio show the other night um, and I was on with a whole bunch of hackers. So nobody was in the dating industry, but it was like these top hackers and they were going to DEF CON right after they did the uh, radio show. So DEF CON is this hacker convention in Vegas. And you would think that the police would just be like swarming that joint. But yeah. apparently they were not. And, and these hackers were celebrating hacking. Uh, <laughs> and they were very interesting just the way, people. the same way that bombers celebrate bombing. Exactly. It's but, like, yeah. oh, but it's funny you just said bombing because I learned about something new. It's called pizza bombing. Have you ever heard of this? No. Okay. No. So Sounds pizza like my bombing night. is when people send pizza pizza to your house so i'm sitting here listening and thinking this is the best thing ever they send you free pizza but you have and to pay then, for but it but then no. yes, they throw you it at you it. yeah they don't they just send it to your house with a pizza delivery man i've heard you about this. Like, and this you have to pay up. so this guy who people seem to hate but slash love who's a huge hacker his name's vincent or something he gets like 18 pizzas a week sent to his house and he got the swat <laughs> team once they called the swat team on him so we at first me and bruin and moon the other girl that was on the show were thinking we're getting free stuff so we're like asking everybody to pizza bomb us <laughs> or like, and i was saying i have a, I was like, I have a gluten intolerance make sure that there's a special <laughs> a weed available like no sausage yeah exactly we were being very picky about what we wanted and then they informed us that you had to pay That's for it so by the end of the show we had a thai guy outside a chinese food guy outside Outside, we had two pizzas. One was gluten free, which I thought was fantastic and very sweet Thoughtful. if whoever sent it. And th- what else did we have? We, like a whole bunch of food. There was a whole bunch did of guys you, waiting outside. Did you give out the address? No, no that's what they're hackers. They oh just know where God. we are. Wait, it hackers. was insane. Hold on. A whole new level of creep. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I was like, how do you know that these people aren't going to come to your house? And he's like, these people are lazy. <laughs> they're going to stay right. at home hacking. They're just going to send shit to your house. But, but I thought it was amazing. Can you send it prepaid? I'd be like, only prepaid pizza <laughs> bombing allowed. I don't know what the rules are, but it was amazing. So at the end, Vincent ended up getting food for everybody because he felt bad. But he was just so frustrated. We're like, why are you frustrated you're getting free pizza he's like you have to pay for it <laughs> i was like oh well that makes the whole experience a little bit different wow but i want to do this i thought it was a cool S- prank okay i'm sorry but i think a guy should pizza bomb a girl he likes and pay for the pizza <gasps> instead of really sending over idea. a drink at yeah, a bar and then he's like yeah. he's going he out his way to be her, finds how out many, where she lives and sends her pizza that's a good move how many girls, yeah. <laughs> guys don't listen to me how many <laughs> girls really eat pizza though uh, I do. Yeah, one. A lot I spent of the majority of my childhood figuring out how to get pizza for free by saying it was a store credit that they messed up my order. What? And Pizza Hut finally figured it out. I kid you not. We used to order pizza like every week. And we'd be like, yeah, we called last time. They brought us the wrong one. And they would come with a new pizza. Like, Sorry about the mistake. No. And then one time I called them. They're like, you've had 10 store credits. <gasps> This is done. They're like, this is your last one. Okay. <laughs> if you're going to use that technique, at least use it at a good pizzeria. I mean, it was Pizza Hut. That's you're all we wait, had. You're wasting it on Pizza Hut. That's all we had. That's true. But you're from other Colorado. places would catch on sense. to it. Other places would catch on. Pizza Hut is a big corporation. Yeah, they you would don't think. care about these people stuff. are not smart. Yeah. Well, so okay, so the two girls that I was talking about, who I met on the show, um, Bruin and Moon, I sat down and we started talking. I was playing Candy Crush, my new obsession, which is another topic for another time. Oh, but, I, but they called me a grandma that. for pay, for playing Candy Crush, so I didn't like them for five seconds. And then I was like, okay, I'll talk to these girls. Mm-hmm. They're not so horrible. Um, and they started telling me about how they met their boyfriends and so. So one of the girls, Moon, she actually went onto Facebook and blindly friended this guy who was she's a never friend? met. I don't know if it was through a mutual friend. Maybe it was, but it was a random guy that she saw on Facebook and friended him. And then he wrote back and said, like, what's up with a friend? And she's like, I don't know, just wanted to flirt, I, whatever it is, like something so 22 year old ish that I have no idea how to comprehend. But <laughs> they did that. And now they're dating for a year and a half. And wow. then... Bruin was telling her story about how she is moving to Miami in a month to be with her boyfriend, who she's never met before, but met him on Instagram? Vine. 
On Vine. On See? Vine. From six seconds of a video. See? Wow. Well, video is better than at least pictures. Six I told seconds. you, Kristen. Grapes used to grow on vines. Now love does. Yep. <laughs> Your brother has hope living in a small he, town. He, no, he's just not. Just a small town boy. He's not, he's not technology savvy. He doesn't have vines. Well, that's why he's, he's got to get on the vine. Yeah. And then Definitely. he might find like one girl. click away. I don't even want to know what he would post to Vine. It would be like stuffed animals dancing together. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Some girls would be I'm into, into that. that. You could have a girlfriend in a month. You have no idea. It could be moving to Miami. It could be a stuffed animal, the girlfriend. But so we have Bruin on the show for the second half of the show because nice. I want to talk to her about this because this, this yeah. concept it's is insane. very foreign to me. But yeah. I think it's like really gutsy what she's doing. Is this the but future? It is the future. Yeah, it's Bruin's a youngster too. These youngsters are some weird shit. Yeah. We're gonna see we're gonna see Bruin back here in like two months, I guarantee it. She's like, Well, I mean, it wasn't that big. So uh, she's already seen it. <laughs> but you never know. I mean you have Vine. Can be different. But you have Vine, you have Instagram, you have to know there's proof if they're actually you know him. You have to have the face attached to the photograph well, to confirm. Do we want to bring her in to talk about this now? Well, no, or are we gonna, gonna wait for no, the we'll second half? We'll I know, you're talking to her and she doesn't have a microphone to answer. I, right. I want to ask about the deep dish stuff. We'll oh. save that. <laughs> deep deep dish. Dish. We're going back to pizza. Just shut up. <laughs> so one other thing that I wanted to talk about is um I have a whole bunch of new obsessions. So there's Candy Crush, which is one, which is a, a game on my iPhone, and I hate it, but I love it. Um, this other one is this texting book that I'm reading. It's called Text That Girl. <laughs> so I am becoming a pro it's at, straightforward. Yeah, at picking up women through text. But You are I, pretty good. Yeah, I am good. Mm -hmm. oh, I think so. I'm like blushing now because you're telling me that I'm, I could be a great lesbian. I hope, would love to be that one day. Um, so I, it, it's this really Aim great high. book. Aim yeah. High. So it's by this guy named Race. And you can check out the book on winggirlmethod.com slash race, R-A-C-E. And um, it talks about texting and how to text and how to get girls to engage with you. And I think some of the texts that are and the rules that are within this book are fascinating. So I wanted to talk to you guys about texting and I thought it would be a good chapter in uh, this week's man's playbook. The problem is though we are going to be um, discussing all of this about texting while texting each other so we're not there's not going to be any vocals. <laughs> no words. It, so. No words. Sorry, it's going to be silent for a while. Yes, yeah, exactly. We'll send you the transcripts there. after. On this team we fight for that itch. On this team we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. Yeah. We claw with our fingernails for that itch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Yeah. All right. So for this chapter in the man's playbook, we're going to talk about texting and rules for texting and what to text and what not to text. But I wanted to talk to you guys about your rules on texting like what like have you ever been turned on by a guy's text that aren't from you know your significant other or even if they are from your significant other is there a way to do it through texting oh, yeah. yeah yeah i think i said that maybe one of our first shows that i love a funny banter in text i know some women are different and they say oh just call me i'm awkward on the phone i'm just like um, haley's friend megan who said <laughs> i'm not calling because i'm uncomfortable so if you can get a good back and forth going on, I find that inc incredibly attractive because it takes wit to write something funny, and um, that's an intelligence. Handsome. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like for me, I want you to call me, but like start it off with text. And if we are in a place where it's kind of like a new thing, like if you can kind of be a little bit funny, and, but with brevity, keep it short and concise, right? But still kind of sexy, like a little bit of sprinkling in the sexy. So give, so give me an example, because okay, so let's say <clears throat> you were to meet a guy on the street, you talk, you flirt, you banter, that you're like, oh, this guy, something's in, something's interesting about him, and he says, oh, give me your number, give him your number, and then he starts texting, and he go, and he's like, as long as he hey, doesn't start texting I have a right good, away. I have a good example. Well. Um, this is actually a girlfriend of mine, but this guy she had known from before they had dated and they hadn't seen each other for several years, but they ran into into each other again at a party and he was kind of had to open it up again for like possible dating because she had shut him down before. Mm -hmm. And his text was something like, let's get into trouble, let's go burn down some libraries or something. I love that. And it was just like short and sweet saying like, I want to see you again, but it was It was like, saying like, I don't know how to read. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was playful. Okay, I want to read you something from this book that's called Text That Girl. You can get it at winggirlmethod.com slash race, R-A-C-E. And it's by this guy named Race, which I, I think it's a great book. Um, the main reason for texting. Let's be honest, you are not going to form a deep laugh 
long-lasting relationship through text messaging alone. Often guys think they should constantly be texting a girl as long as she is responding. Some of this stems from the fact that they thri- the fact they thrive off the feelings of validation when she writes back. Unfortunately, just because she's writing back does not mean the relationship is moving forward. Texting is a tool, albeit a powerful one, that must be used with a purpose in mind. And this is the purpose, and this is what I think a lot of guys forget. There is only one main purpose for sending a text to meet up with her. That's what you're moving the texting towards. That's but, true. But to Kristen's point, though, I think you still got to be able to like kind of have that wit thing, right? Oh yeah, I mean, he's not saying just like okay. right away. You all have right. to, you still have to build all that stuff. But the end goal should be yeah. you shouldn't you should have an end goal. You shouldn't be mindlessly texting for exactly. months and months. Yeah, don't Thank just you. don't just come right in with hey, let's hang out next week. Or let's hang out Saturday. Yeah, because like, who's this that, creepy guy who yeah, just yeah, wants yeah. something from yeah, me? Let's not. Yeah. Well, actually, I want to give you some examples because um, like <laughs> I'm then, learning how to text better. <laughs> I think I said this too before about texting, but the um, the use of spelling is important. Um, if if words are spelled incorrectly, I mean, you don't have to um, you know use every apostrophe and comma in the right place, but don't do the teenage like. Wit for with, you know what I mean? Well, well, no, spell out no, with. no. Actually, he advises to do that. He's like, get up on your texting lingo. Ew, like, see, no. some people only have a certain number of characters. I'll tell you a deal breaker for me. That's a deal breaker for me. Okay, the, the grammar. Sorry. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. All right, Webster. Well, that's different. I'm totally if you're using that. like texting lingo as opposed to like I mean, screwing texting, up a word. Let, I'll just say this really quick. Texting lingo is fine. You know, like LOL or whatever. I'm not super into that stuff. But if you're if you're spelling things like in a hip, weird way where you spell like cool, K-O-O-L, I will never, ever speak to you in person or through text. C-O-O. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of coo. I like coo. I mean, it's, it's all, all right. if, if the person is connecting, but if you think you're doing it just to sound coo, then don't do it. What about you know? hater? H eight T E R. No, and, and don't even use the word hater. That's a really stupid <laughs> word. <laughs> Just say he doesn't like me. Well, well, look, th- this is what I'm going to say. For for us men, it's really tough because we do try and do stuff that is witty. But some of us have weird sense of humor. So or women, no sense of humor. Or no like, sense like of humor. Mo. In my case, <laughs> that women, it's hard for them to get it. So what happens is we send up, we end up sending a message that is just so hard to cipher, to decipher through text. Yep. So how do you send something witty that's not something that's something that they could get? Something something that they short. Can get? Yeah. What you do to send something witty that they can get is calling back to a, a scenario that you were both in together. Totally. Because yeah. yeah. you don't have to be hilarious to do that. You just have to have a memory, which hopefully yeah. everyone you has. You can just send a message saying, like, freaking bagels, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Something yeah. like yeah. that. Or if you met at the supermarket. <laughs> Extra cream cheese. If you, yeah. if you met at the supermarket, you could take a picture of a coupon from, like, Vaughn's, and they're like, <laughs> they have, like, a discount on don't oranges do that for 69 it shows, yeah. <laughs> Nope. Don't do no. that because nope. it shows he's cheap. No. <laughs> okay. I don't want a guy using coupons. It's, it's funny because, like, a text like that, I would actually, I'm going to insult Mo. No, insult me. To. Go for it. I Go would think it. you're trying too hard. You went and searched for the coupon, then you took a picture of it, That's then you true. sent it. It's Got too much it. thought put into me when we're first like initiating banter. If we were in a relationship and you're, and then you were doing that, I'd be like, oh, that's so cute. He sent me a Vons coupon yeah, for like, lobster. Like Marnie at one point was like, you know, I really like the Grand Canyon. Next thing you know, like you're at the Grand Canyon. <laughs> you're like <laughs> bungee jumping off of it. <laughs> <All> right, so, <laughs> like, taking a so, selfie of himself. So like, that's too much. Like, think that's of too much. <laughs> yes. Okay. I wanted to read a couple of rules from this guy, or actually, it, it's like uh, guidelines. So he was talking about uh, should you use a question mark? So this is the way about phrasing, like we were talking before. So a lot of guys say, well, let's ask a question. Like, mm-hmm. are you coming tonight? Like, not in a sexual way. This is just like, are you coming tonight? A or question mark is what are ne- you doing tonight? A question mark is too needy. Yes, that's exactly what it says. Too, and I agree. Mm-hmm. You should write really? this book. Yeah. I, we're I know we're probably going to write our own book really on this and steal etiquette. everything this guy said. I'm really good with that. Wait, hold on. I don't ago. understand that. Why is a question mark too Well, needy? listen to this, okay? So this is, which one do you like better? Are you coming tonight? Shall I be expecting you this evening, my dear? Which one do you like better? No, no. I don't want grandpa. I don't want to My dear grandpa. sounds like, yeah. What is your favorite that? color? Listen, what is your v- favorite color versus, and your favorite color would be? And your favorite color would be. Yeah. Well, that sounds more eloquent. Yeah, but you're more inclined to respond back. Yeah. You're right. It does yeah. sound too needy with the question marks. But he gave, I'm just like bouncing all over his book. I freaking love it. Um, he gave some guidelines and rules for texting, which I think are really important. And this would be the chapter in the man's playbook that this is the important part. So he said, it's the mindset to have while texting. Okay. So he said, send it and forget it. After you send a text, go on with your life and make yourself busy doing something else. 
That's a good rule. Yeah. Uh, the way you word your text is critical because over text, she does not have the same social pressure to reply to you as she does in person. Each text you, text you send must be engaging enough to invoke a response. Okay. Next thing. True. Nothing is a big deal. Whenever you are in the middle of a text interaction and start becoming nervous that she might mess up or do something wrong, take a step back and take a deep breath. Relax and smile or take a break for a few minutes and do something else. Your text will be much more effective when you are happy, fun, and positive. Yeah, and with that, we should talk about timing, too. You know, you don't always want to be right on top of it. It's, like, kind of nice to, like, casually respond. and For sure. Yeah. I had this one guy that I was coaching, and he was having trouble with approaches. And, like, we did a coaching session together, and so – after we talked, he's like, okay, my approaches are great. I'm getting these phone numbers. And then he contacted me a week later and said, okay, now I'm having trouble getting to the second date. I'm getting all these first dates, but the second date's an issue. So he walked me through what he was doing and he started going over how he was text interacting with girls after he went on a date with them. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, well, they would write to him and he would write back right away. And I was like, no, 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 you can't do that. You got to give it some time. So I told him next time that you want to text back a girl, text me instead and give it a break or just put your phone down. And he wrote back and he said, I did something even better. Anytime a girl texts me, I throw my phone behind the couch so that I have to go like, <laughs> move the couch, move the couch. It like takes moments to go do this, move the couch and, and get the phone. And then by that time he realizes, that's okay, I, I should take a break. That's what I do with potato chips. <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't eat them. I had, like, get away from me. I had this problem too with girls. I'm fuck. I'm bad at texting. I'm great in person, bad at texting, but like I would just be waiting on, on this girl's every like whim to fucking text me and it would drive me crazy i hate that and then you have a you're, you've written two and they haven't written any back and yeah. you write one more and you're like oh, you have like a spelling mistake like, like, oh shit it'll, it'll, it'll and then take it's her, just fucking weird yeah or it takes her like 30 minutes to respond <laughs> and it takes me a minute to respond you know, you know what? You know what is a good technique i think as well um if you're bad at texting a way to make it comical is not to force it but if you happen to get a funny autocorrect go with it Go with it and send it. Go, oh my God, oops, I didn't, you know, I didn't mean to <laughs> send that. And all of a sudden you can have this funny moment about this fact that you sent, like, you know, boobies instead of cooties or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Not that they're both one and the same or anything like that. But um, I think something important to add, I don't know if he mentions anything about this in the book, is closing the text session. Because yes. I know there's, I know certain people that continue to text until there is a formal goodbye. Well, Nothing drives me more crazy Ugh. or makes them sound more desperate. We're like, you're like, you're still there? It's like, wait, wait, wait this is an instant messenger. Right, like, exactly. Once we've kind we're of gotten a session. To, right, and once we've gotten to the core of what we're talking about, and then we kind of both in our gut know that the convo is over for now, yeah. let's not do a formal goodbye. It's creepy. Exactly. See, I don't think he, well, he, open he even says, he's like, let let her have like less te text back to you. You don't need to write back K Thank or you. all Thank right. You. You, you just like leave them hanging, which I yeah. started applying now to people too. And it, I can feel it just gets them. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. can feel they but like it's me nice. more. It's like, you shouldn't have to always respond to everything they say. It's like, let it be done. Well, the, the whole right. thing with, with texting and even with dating and with calling and everything is that you have to remember your life first. Your life exists before you met this girl. You have 33 years or you have 18 years. Whatever it is, you have all of your life separate from this woman. And a lot of guys, what they do is they say, screw that life. This woman's more important. So I'm going to pay all of my attention to her. So the more that you can take a breath, like this guy says, and relax and just say, like, I have a life I have to get back to. I'll contact her when I really want to or when I have something that I want to say, not like sitting there for 10 minutes trying to figure out what should I write to this girl that'll be really quick, like quirky and funny and it'll make her want me. If you do start thinking those things, you got to put the phone down, go back to your life and then go back to it when you want to interact with her. Yeah. The key is just to not get in your head. Absolutely. Yeah. Psych like yourself out. Oh, I'm looking for this one Dana, section. I need this book. Oh, but he talks about like even like how to approach a woman, how to get her number, um, where he actually, if I can remember correctly, he was saying that if you're going to ask for the number, you don't have to wait till the very end to ask for the number. If you're talking about like this great little cafe that you were going to and she really likes Cuban food and blah, blah, blah you can say, you know what? I want to take you to this Cuban place that I love. What's your number? And then you get her number from there and then you go back to continuing the conversation. Mm. You don't have to wait till the very end to get her number and then you can write her afterwards and say something about cuban food like you can just list different types of cuban food or something like mm, yummy like, and, uh, my mouth is watering mm, right diarrhea. now and you know what to our men <laughs> out there okay this is what really pisses me off about some of our men out there is they'll ask a girl out and she'll be like oh no i'm sorry i have a boyfriend and then they'll be like 
Oh, Aww. well, oh, well, you know, I was just asking you as friends. Like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I'm like, if you're a man, just man up and be like, oh, okay, I get it. Oh, that's great. Well, it was nice meeting you. At least, like, acknowledge the fact that you got turned down. Don't turn it around on the woman. And be like a I had a huge issue with and that. And be a fucking puss about it. But like, you can actually even spin it in another direction. You which can is how? You, well, you can just have fun with it. You can say, "Whoa, I'm not, I'm not trying to get into your pants or anything." Like something like where you're, like she's trying to get you or something. If she says, "I have a boyfriend, I don't want to go out with you," be like, "Whoa, slow down there, sweetie." I'm like, or something that's more <laughs> playful yeah. that shows that you're not rattled by it, which can take it to a flirty level. Yeah. And she may say, "Oh, he's cute. He would be really good for my friend," or something. Or I that, should break up. With my boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. Or should right. bring my, my boyfriend with you. But um, I feel like I'm not really giving good, tangible examples from this book because there's just so much. Um, but there was also something about like, you know, when you write to girls or people and they go, who is this? There was like an answer about how to play around oh, with that as well. One. But there, like, it, there's ugh, there's a whole, a whole bunch of things. But I think that guys should check out this book, winggirlmethod.com slash race, R-A-C-E. And that ends this chapter in the man's playbook. To for be this week to be continued. But we have the amazing Bruin with us who's going to tell us about never meeting a significant other before moving in with them and how that all works. All right, so I want to talk about one of our uh, newest sponsors who are freaking amazing, Ting. Yeah, I don't want people to get uh, confused with Ting just being the sound effects my boobs make. <laughs> Ting, ting. I'm so familiar small. with that. But Ting is a game changer. If you're like me, you're tired of spending literally $200 per cell phone bill. Ting is where it's at. It's mobile that makes sense. And it's truly contract free. There's no termination fees. So you pay ahead of time and basically you get exactly what you're paying for. Yeah, so I, I want to go down like some of these things that Ting has because I think that yeah. a lot of people get into trouble with overage fees or with with paying for things that they don't necessarily use. I know I had that when I first had my you know first cell phone package. So Ting has no contracts, no bundling or ride along services, no overage charges or penalties, unlimited devices on one plan, which is freaking amazing. Credits on unused service. No phone company ever does that. If you don't use it, they're like, oh, too bad, you screwed up and chose the wrong package. Right. No add on charges. No mysterious line items that are on your bill where you're like what does this mean and why am I being charged $78 yeah they for- hide so much stuff in there so like, it's much. so angry it's like buying a car where they're like oh it's three ninety nine, and you you like walk out and it's seven ninety nine by the time that you're done but it's giving them your firstborn child it's, and it's over it's really good because you can control basically how much you've used by just going online and using their um, yeah. really easy user friendly account you can monitor online yeah and they have a mobile app that just came out so if you're like me and you're never really on a computer you can go check your minutes on your computer and I mean, I mean, on your cell phone and monitor it there. Yeah. And, and the other thing is probably you probably won't end up needing customer support because they're so awesome. But if you do, there's uh, no a real, hold. There's like no hold at all. It's really fast and it's um, like, in, you know, good English. It's like a real life yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you, you, it's okay. Let's just give like a little overview. It's a design your own phone plan and pay for what you use and uh, don't pay if you don't use it. That's yeah, pretty and, simple. And for all our guys that are looking for a little love on this high, you know. <laughs> You could use it as your bat phone. So go to askwomen.ting.com, get your $25 discount or $25 credit to apply towards your first bill, uh, and honestly, you will thank us. You're going to save a lot of money. Tang, tang, tang. Tang, tang, tang. So stop paying tang, for tang, tang. Sell, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> You're listening to the Ask Women Podcast, a Podcast One presentation. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. Hey guys, welcome back to the Ask Women Podcast, where you get real advice straight from the source. Women. Uh, we are here with, uh, I had to think about that for a second. We're here with Bruin, who is a suicide girl, super adorable, and um, has Super many, is the cutest, many, by the way. Yeah, she's cute, but yet tough at the same time, which is a like very Like, she could give you a black eye, for sure. Like, she would punch you in the face. Yeah, but she but could also, hug you afterwards. But she'd also wink at me. It's like a right. bunny and like an alligator had a baby. No, not alligator, like... Raptor. I don't know. It yeah. works. It's working. But she, she's got tattoos, which also means sexy. It does. I know. Haley like, was like playing with them before. She's like, playing? Define touching, playing. Touching her body all over. Stroking. And there is a difference. Bow. Um, anyways, welcome, into it. Yeah, welcome. Hi, thanks for yeah. having me. Well, so, so, co- so continue what you were saying when we went off the air. You were just saying what about uh, our advice? Um, that I do, I feel like I do everything di- like the opposite of what you say to do. Like what you say not to do is exactly how I go about 
everything. So okay, so mean? that no, what she means by that is she's moving to Miami to be with a guy she doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> like the texting thing, for example. Like we, the person who I'm moving for is, um, like we text constantly, like and respond constantly. And yeah, well, but that's that, after you're in a cycle now, right? Yeah. You're, you're you in have the a, yeah, you're in the point where you are both together. Oh, it was like this at the beginning, though. The very, very like the second I gave him my phone number, it was like. So, Game on. So okay. tell us how this started. Yes. Let's, let's take our audience through what happened here. Okay. So I have a lot of followers on most um, app. Social media. Social media sites. thing. Um, I was on Vine and I just saw this random guy accidentally leave two comments so that were the same thing. And I was like, who is this weirdo? Why does he care so much? Like, why is he saying that I'm his? No. And then I just clicked his thing and I was like, wow, he's really attractive. So then I Googled his name. Because I'm a stalker. Yeah. Um, no, because you have internet. <laughs> right. It's really easy to find everything. Um, and then I found his Instagram, and then I added him, and then he like freaked out about me adding him, and like posted that I added him. I was like, this is embarrassing. Take this down. And then I was drunk one night and was like, I really want to say inappropriate things to you. But what? Why? Like, why? What, what about him? I don't know. He's he was, just hot. Oh, he, is he gorgeous, funny? Gorgeous, gorgeous, and like trains like in MMA and like just. Oh. It's like everything I want, and like always posted about hockey and stuff. So it wasn't so. his personality that, it, that oh, like no caught clue. your attention. You have no clue. No clue. And so um, I just was like, hey, I really, you know, let's get to know each other. And then he found my fan Facebook page and sent so me his phone number. So you're the aggressor. I like it. Yeah. And then, well, he was following me for a while, and I didn't know he was just a fan. So, and then I stopped him. So that's it's possible. Cool. That's a dream come, come true for like, a fan. Exactly. Because <laughs> I know there's guys right now that I are know, thinking right? that's going to happen with us. I'm going to start doing okay. Justin Timberlake. Yeah. So, so you guys met online. You exchanged numbers. Was there just phone conversations that started happening after this? Or was it video? It was only um, text for a while. And then like one day I was like, is this a catfish? Like I don't know yeah. if this yeah. is I was like, FaceTime me right now. He's like, no, I, like, I'm like i at work. I was like, no, 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 you FaceTime me right now. <laughs> right. And then he FaceTimed me, and I don't know, he's a real person. Now all we, like, we just FaceTime all the time and send photos, and like I always send him my outfit every day because he cares, I guess. And like, Really? Yeah. Did, he, did you send him this one today? Yeah. <laughs> did he approve? <laughs> like, so thumbs up. How long has this been going on for? Um, a month and a half, two months. Oh, that's it? Mm -hmm. And you're moving? I'm moving. So did, did have you like sold or like gotten your place all s set up and? Um, I'm telling my landlord I'm pregnant and I have to leave my lease. Jesus. Does that uh, work with leases you know what's too? Fun? It has to. I have to go to my, I have to go to my baby daddy. He has to take care of me apparently. <laughs> like, this is how you're I'm making a baby. You have priorities Seriously. now. No, no, I no, love I'm that. Not actually. I love that your excuse is like, I'm a whore. <laughs> um, so I gotta go. Yeah, I no. And I can't pay the next I'm month's rent. No, did, it, did it cross your mind that maybe you should just go visit him I on am. vacation instead of a permanent move? <laughs> I am. I'm going actually next week from today for like four days, and he has everything planned out. Like all his friends are meeting me the first night. He has four days to lose you. He has four days to like <laughs> either make it or break it. Right. But... Or you guys just won't leave the hotel room for four days. Right. His house. Or his house. Or his house. house. Have you had like um, online sex with him? Or online oh, sex? Oh, Is that sexting? cyber sex? No, sexting? not sex. I don't know. Like on Skype. Not Skype. Not but Skype. But gets, through pictures. But he gets videos. I get videos. Do I get to like, rewatch the videos. Do you possibly. Snapchat him these videos so then they disappear? No, he just gets them. Wow. You real chat these. Wow. I mean, he's just he real can, trust. He can, whatever. He he would make tons of money if he sold those videos to people. Cause well, don't give him any ideas. Were, no, I told him. Okay. I, him. <laughs> I know where he lives. I have his address. Do you really? Though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I've like Who Googled, knows? mapped this place. Like. Okay, so I have a question. You go out there to visit him for vacation. What if it's super weird? What if it's not like the same as it has been? Are you still going to like move out there? Uh, no. Yeah. But, um, there's no possible way it's not going to be. Like we communicate way too much and um, talk so it's, way too much. It's possible with all the all the technology that we have right now, you can have a virtual relationship as long as you're you know the person is real. Totally. And yeah. that was like the main thing. And so yeah. what, what was your dating life before you met him? Um, I started a dating blog right like the week before I met him because I just go I used to go on dates like 
four or five a week. Oh, wow. So yeah. what was what made a good date and what made a bad date? Um, They mostly were bad. Uh, the good date was they paid for everything and <laughs> didn't make me want to smash my face into the table. Wow. That is a good date. That's an accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's been like dates that I was like, I don't know how to but get out of this. But what were they doing wrong that would make you want to smash your face into the table? <laughs> <laughs> Usually for know. me, it's just someone talking. I'm like, shut up, <laughs> smash. It was just the most shallow conversation, like being like, I have so many tattoos too. Like, oh, Okay, so you're so looking... So women even, how old are you? You're in your 23. 23. So even 23 year old, not even, I'm not insulting you, even. but I kind no, of you am. Say even. Even, even um, really dumb girl, no, I'm just kidding. Even <laughs> really young women want real conversation. Right. Exactly. So what is, um, what was something different? Because you said that you only knew him physically. So did he do anything to delve deeper for you? Um, I don't, well, the conversation. We just talk about things that we had mutual. Most of our interests are mutual interests. Right. Uh, and the first conversation we had was like doing Tough Mudder. Like that's how everything started. Yeah, I was tough. Like, that's the the competition, right? The workout. Yeah. It's like a workout. Like thing. a ten mile. A bunch of people. Like a ten mile run with twenty something obstacles. And yeah. I was like, oh, I need someone to help me do it. And then he's like, I'll do it. And so I texted him. That was like the first. And so from there, it was just like, so what do you like to do? What do you actually do? And so when you guys talk over text or talk over phone, is he kind of just agreeing with whatever that you say or is he taking the conversation to a new level he always takes the conversation like i'm really really bad at it like i always get stumped and then i'm like i don't know what to say anymore so then i stopped that's why we had you on the podcast (laughs) (laughs) and then uh he (laughs) and then he always manages to say something to take it so he's not like he's not like oh my god i'm a fan of hers and i'm still talking to her and she's moving to be with me he's like now over that He's, like, probably proud of it to his friends. Right. But he's like, okay, now I'm going to lead. Like, we plan on, like, I'm moving before Thanksgiving and his family's coming for Thanksgiving to Orlando. Wow. We're actually mo- I'm moving to Orlando. How old is he? 25. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then this Christmas, since I'll be living there, the plan is to go to his family's for Christmas. So That's awesome. Yeah. Can you he, tell he's me the, the pursuer, so. I love it. So it needs Tom, to be, yeah. Can, I would love for you to break it down. Like, can you tell me about what keeps your attraction over social media like what keeps you engaged in him if you could give me an example or if, if rather than just saying oh we talk and we talk about the same things like right. give an example um an example god uh this is well, the lack of like sex what, like what makes you want to write because we were talking about texting before and like what Tech makes picks. girls want to get engaged rather than just say like ha 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 or lol or k like what gets you to be engaged in his conversation and want to continue talking to him I mean, he knows what to ask. Like, he's always concerned about, like, my friends. Like, he always asked about Moon. He's like, oh, is Moon there with you? Like, he, I just got sent, like, is Moon at the podcast with you? Because he knew, like, and so, I don't know. He stays really engaged in what I'm doing constantly and gives me tons of attention, which I'm, like, a attention whore, so. Right. But <laughs> in not in a, or, let me ask, is it in a suck up way? Like, because I want to, for the guys who are listening, I want them to understand the um, differentiation between being a suck up and putting a woman on a pedestal and giving attention. It's in the most like endearing, like he's actually interested in what I'm doing way. Like same thing, like I'll ask him about like fighting and stuff and sparring, like these fighters that I have no fucking clue about. Sorry, right. I swear. No, that's okay. Um, you swear all you want. Okay. So you can tell that he's not trying to please you by asking no, these questions. No, no. Cause, okay. Cause he's also interested in it too. Yeah. Like he's probably, he likes to say that he's more interested in like whatever we have. Than I me. I love it. Well, I want you to stick around. So we're actually going to have uh, Chloe, who's on the phone right now. Got it. And Chloe, um, can can she hear me now? Chloe, <laughs> so, no. Chloe, are you there, Chloe? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Chloe. Yes. So you're on the air. So I, we have Chloe on the line right now. And um, it's really funny because like I don't really interact that much on um, on Twitter. But when I when I do, I always end up like stumbling upon really cool people. So uh, Chloe wrote to me on Twitter, maybe even to ask women. I'm not sure. And then I checked out her blog and it was pretty awesome. And she had this whole article on Tinder, which started the conversation about Tinder a couple of weeks ago. So I wanted to have Chloe on the phone and talk to us about her dating life and what mistakes men are making and and tinder as well because i want to hear more about 
social media and how it's bringing people together. Because, Chloe, we have Bruin in studio with us who met her boyfriend online as well through Vine. And she's never met him in real okay. life. And now she... <laughs> and now she's going, Craigslist. Yeah, and now she's going to Miami to live with him and have never met before. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. so, so welcome. Wow, that's incredible. I know. Amazing, right? I can't tell if people say, yeah. wow, wow, like, oh my God, this is awesome. Or, wow, she's scaring me. <laughs> Yeah. That's, That's a the big dumbest risk. decision ever. <laughs> it's not. Listen, at 23, take risks. Why not? You're not happy Absolutely. in Los Angeles. Move. Go move somewhere else. If that's the impetus for getting you to go, then then it is. If it works out, amazing. If it doesn't, you're in a new place mm-hmm. to explore. Orlando, Disneyland, amazing. Epcot. So, <laughs> so yeah, Chloe. So tell me or tell us a little bit about yourself and about your single dating life. Yeah, well, I've kind of made um, a career out of first dates, um, much to my chagrin. <laughs> um, but um, I've stumbled upon Tinder, which is the you know the new rage in um, Chicago. Anyway, I feel like it's I mean it's exploded all over the country. But um, yeah. is everyone aware of how Tinder works, or do I need to explain? I'm actually it? not. So tell okay. me, yeah, do <laughs> yeah, a break quick it down, overview please, for yeah. our listeners. Yeah, yeah. Tinder, I think it's the best thing to come into, um, like, the digital dating world right now because it goes back to the basics of um, do you find this person in your close vicinity attractive? And what it does is it um, gives you, like, just pictures of um, people within a certain mile radius, and you can set the radius, and you look at these pictures and you either hit, you know, that you, you either hit the X button or the love button and you either like them or you don't. And then they're either able to the left or the right. So harsh. So harsh. Or you do see them again if they like you as well. I know they aren't aware that they're getting X'd, but still it's just that X over someone's face. I think it's so so sad. sad. If if they're, they're like, oh, I have 40 people in my vicinity and And nobody likes me. Yeah. They're like, I'm being X'd all over. Yeah. But that doesn't, I mean, That doesn't happen just because you don't realize how many people are out there. And that was the first thing that hit me is I was like, especially I was at this point, I had just celebrated a birthday and I was like, oh my God, there are just no guys anywhere. And and then I joined Tinder the next day and I had no idea how many guys are within, I don't know why I set 11 mile radius. That was just my thing. (laughs) 11 miles, not going 12. Not 12, yeah. And and I couldn't believe it. There's so many guys around. And um, it almost becomes like a game, and it's really addicting. I love and, that. Um, well, we had this, this yeah, guy so, who just called out on before who was saying, I don't know where to meet women. But, like, that, it, that is the thing about it. It does show you how many options so are around you. How does it work after that? So then you see who's around you, and then what happens? Okay. Yeah, so if they hit like and you hit like, then it shows that you have a match. And you have the option to start a conversation from there, and someone has to pick it up. So it has to be, um, you know, one, someone has to initiate it or no one is, initiates it. It's just totally, you know, from there, someone's called. Okay, so, um, so, so say I'm a guy, right? I want to initiate yeah. a conversation with this girl who I've never met before because we just talked about in our text segment that, you know, you talk about something that you do when you meet the girl for the first time. Now, I haven't met this mm-hmm. girl at all. So what is my mm-hmm. best way to say to holler at this girl? Um, yeah. You know, Holla at your boy. Too, Holla. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't say holla. First thing. Um, Holla. But, um, if you, you know, a lot of people will make the mistake and just be like, um, I think you're really sexy or something. Like, no, that's not, that's not going to happen. Um, yeah. but a lot of people, you know, a lot of guys will just say, you know, hi, how's your Sunday going? Or, you know, something kind of mundane or benign to start a conversation and then you start like a text conversation that way um okay. and you kind of get to know who this person is and if you want to go out with them or not what was the um, best initial first text like post seeing that they're cute and you're attracted and you have a match what was the the best first text that got you really engaged and made you want to meet this, this person in, in person um i would say um when someone sent me like sunday fun day exclamation point because i was out drinking with my friends too and i was like absolutely like this guy could, if you like the party then i'm in so um you know just something that was kind of benign but fun and, and skipping easy. all the formalities and um, too so you yeah. like that so you shouldn't respond with so you're not at church yeah. <laughs> 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 mismatch right. there 
Now, now let um, me let me ask you guys who you start having conversation with. What would you say the percentage is of guys you go out with from the ones that you've liked, or at least meet up with? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I would say it's probably um, like thirty to forty percent. Um, really? That we at least like meet up for a drink. Yeah. Um, so how often are you going? Then, like, how often are you using this? Like, how many dates a week do you have then? Um, well, it all depends on the week and how busy you are. Honestly, if if you wanted to, you could have. I know. Um, I've I've done this, and I've had friends like have like have two dates in one day because it's just like Damn. so hot right now. Oh, that's awesome. But everyone is on it, so. Um, I mean, if you wanted, you could really set something up for almost every day of the week. I'm because, totally getting a divorce. Um, I want to try this out. I have a question, yeah, though. I feel like I, f- I fucked up I know. The out. wrong time, right? We could be moving to Miami. We could be having Boom. sex every day. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Chloe, do you feel like it's more like, is it more like hookup based or can you actually like meet someone? Honestly. You know, it's both. It's yeah. totally how you want to use it. Cool. Because I have, um, I have a guy friend who uses it solely for hookups. And, um, but most of my girlfriends use it, you know, to like go out on dates. Is there a way to differentiate um, what your uh, goals are using this? Or could, could, you know, a woman run into a guy who icon? is just looking to hook up and she is looking for more serious? Is that something you just discuss or is there a different? Well, like, yeah, I've gotten messages from guys that um, are clearly just trying to hook up. You know, it'll be like, because this is your, it goes by your GPS and you're, you know, so who's around you? And so, I've gotten messages from guys like, hey, I'm in town for the night. Want to hang out? I'm like, no. Like, like no. no I hang get, out I get inside it. of like, me? Um, <laughs> uh, um, I, I also so feel like if you ask a girl out for a drink, that's normally let's go fuck. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Well, I, mean, I don't think so. I no. think a drink, uh, Grey Goose makes your girl get loose. Come on now. The girl, I would never think that. Come on now. Don't listen Most to fired. No, he's just talking shit. I, I'll fired. be serious. Like, I, I, a girl that I'm looking to court, I either take out to a coffee to make it not feel serious, or I take her out to lunch, or I take her out to a nice dinner, but a girl I'm just looking to, to bang it out. I'm going to take her out for a drink. Really? That's gonna, it's early on. That's interesting get, insight loose. into men, though, because that's not what I loose, would think. See, and then we're going to go home. If it's a first date, though, you don't really want to commit to a whole dinner, a whole thing. No. Man, that's a lot of time. Or coffee. A date without alcohol sounds awful. Thank you. There's absolutely no <laughs> well, way. Well, Chloe, like you, we Chloe. know about you now, girl. Exactly. You want to grab a this. drink? No, I'm fascinated by this. So there was so the, the blog that you had up on your blog <laughs> um, was about yeah, one guy so that you had Chloe met. Was, com, yeah, Chloe Chloe. Com, yeah. I, I, um, this is like a tongue twister for me. ChloeKlein.com um, is mm-hmm. is all about this one guy uh, that you did go out with who was totally normal. Are you still dating him? Um, you know, we've actually been out a few times. Um, and just because we're both so busy, we've, we've um, only been out, I think, like three times. Over um, how long of a period? In a month. Oh, in wow. And does that yeah. does that fade like does that phase away for you? Like, yeah. are you not so into him anymore, or are you not so into him? Which is why you're not hanging out so much, or is it start to fizzle because you're not hanging out with some with him as often? Um, I well, not speak for today. me, it's kind of the opposite. It's like I'm so I'm so judgmental up front that I'm I'm skeptical of everyone I meet. I so love you. It kind of <laughs> Kristen has like, a crush the now. More I talk to someone, I'm like, oh no, you actually are a nice person. Like, oh, wow. So rare. So I misread your um, pencil beard. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. and your dragon tattoos. Well, your expectations are so bottom level low. um, (laughs) Everyone surprises you. Comes along and is a nice person. You're like, what the hell? I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to do with this. Chloe, where where are Um, you located? Where do you live? What town? Chicago. Chicago. Oh, yeah, Chicago. Chicago. I want I want to hear the answer to the question though about like the amount of time between dates, like. Is it is it fizzling and you're not hanging out as much, so you're not making time, or are you really just so busy? What's going on? No, it's actually um, like I've been out of town, he's been out of town, and it actually, I think it makes it. Um, I think it's the opposite of fizzling. I think it's because then you just like get more excited to see each other. Well, for me anyway. Nice. I don't know, but um, so are you, know, you texting? Kind of, like, builds, builds up the anticipation. Oh, for sure. Um, and it's because it's like you know, well, hey, are you free this night? No, I'm not free this night, and we just like literally have like. 
opposite schedules. Um, gotcha. So are you texting? So are you talking on the phone in between? Are you still going on dates with other guys off Tinder in between? <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course she is. Well, yeah. Chloe's a, Chloe's a smart girl. I have to do my do Tinder research, you know. She has a blog <laughs> to keep up. Come on. We're, yeah. You know, I feel like we're such a text generation. I don't even know what I'd do if I had to talk to someone on the phone. Oh, me too. I don't even so know what true. I'd say. I'd just be like, You're doing well so far. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> I would never or know. Or with your talking skills. Honestly, for me, when in my phone rings, I'm like, ah, oh, what do I do? Like, I don't even want to talk on the phone. I'm the same way. Well, thank you for coming on and talking to us, Chloe. Do you want to tell uh, your website one more time so people can go check you out? Oh, absolutely. That'd be great. Yes, it's ChloeKlein.com. That's C-H-L-O-E-C-L-I-N-E.com. And it's all about dating. It's about being single, uh, yeah, an attractive woman in Chicago. Being single in the city and just a lot of funny dating stories. Like I said, I'm unfortunately or fortunately a <laughs> first date kind of store. So you know, um, I, I got a hot girl in Chicago I'm going to set you up with so you could uh, help her out a little bit. <laughs> By dating yeah, her? Maybe we can help each other. No, out. like yeah. just help her out with getting dudes. <laughs> getting her on Tinder. And she says all the dudes in Chicago are fat and ugly. Oh, that's not true. No, Tinder, they are on. drinkers. I they are drinkers. I love Chicago people. My husband's from Chicago. I, I love yep. it. Well, thank you so much, Chloe, for being on with us and being patient thank about getting me. all the information to talk to us. Um, but yeah, go check out Good our luck, website. girl. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. All right, so we're, do we have enough time to go into analyze yeah, this? Let's I, analyze I feel like this. we're analyzing we, a lot today anyway yeah let's analyze this all right so so i'm gonna uh, explain analyze this a little bit so what we do is people send us in questions or sometimes they'll call into our show and we will analyze situations for them analyze whether the girl's into them whether she's not into them answer questions we basically break it down and give people feedback from a female we perspective give them the bad news exactly so if dun, you do want to send in your questions which so many people have so we're so sorry we can't get to all the questions we honestly have been like slammed with emails but it's ask at askwomenpodcast.com. We got like 350 emails last Lotty week. So, so a lot of questions to go through. And, All right. And, and also, real quick, we want to set up a 911 hotline for oh, yes. you to call in and leave a voicemail of what horrible thing is going on in your dating life. Make it short and quick. Make it like, you know, 30 that. to 60 seconds. And we want to play the best ones at the end of every Ooh, show. Oh, I love that. So, uh, okay. So, what's, th- what's the number for them to call into our voicemail? 911. <laughs> don't it's, hello don't ask do women. That. no <laughs> we don't have a number yet you just said we're going to set it up we don't have a number oh, yet okay Fail. we're, gonna, we're wow. gonna set that so up. actually no that google one's not working actually if anybody knows how to set up a <laughs> 800 line or something that has an answering machine let us know through this our is, twitter account but save your stories because yeah. this is in the works exactly we works. need we need tech assistance we're God, those hackers that's who we should be contacting like how do we do this and then hack into the pan- pentagon we're the only 911 line that answers like a week later <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll be with you in a week. Yeah. All right. So here is our first question. And Bruin, I want you to chime in on these too, because I think you'll give a, a younger person's perspective as well, which sadly we are not. Um, okay. Uh, excuse <laughs> me yourself. I know. We are young. Damn it. Okay. Okay. Hey, ladies and Mo. Uh, this is from Mina, who is a guy. He writes that. Uh, Thanks a lot for a great show. One part enlightenment, one part laughs I like. Is there a shit test or shit filter for screening out girls who are married or taken? The last couple of times that I've been out or at a party, the girls I liked or connect with are taken or married. I only found out they were taken after they gave me their numbers. What? What? They they do it because they're afraid not to. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We were talking about before. Mm -hmm. If it's something in my energy or vibe that I send out, married women take me, I'm unavailable. Uh, Do tell me how I can get rid of it. Oh, that's a good question. You know, I think think the big thing for me is when you ask them for their number, can I take you out sometime? Because then right away they're going to let you know I'm in a relationship. If, if you kind of leave it open to, oh, let's hang out as friends, and this girl is just not getting the attention from her boyfriend that she needs, so she comes and gets it from you, yeah. that's your problem. So you gotta let you got to make your intentions known right off the bat. So, so yeah, that's great. Let your intentions be known. So he's, he's asking, is there like a fil- – shit testing is a PUA term. But is there a filter, like some, some question that you can think of that he can ask in the very beginning so he doesn't waste half an hour talking to a woman? Do you live with a roommate? I always, I always get that. It's probably not the best question, but I'll be like, "What if she's like, yeah, I have a roommate? Are you right? Banging? I mean, don't then listen you're to like, me. Are you banging your roommate in a one bedroom? 
in right, the right. studio. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do you share well, a bed? Well, I, look, I think... That's tough. I think talking to any girl that's sexy that you're interested in, whether she has a boyfriend or not, that's going to build your man sexy. It's going to build your confidence. For sure. And not every girl you talk to is going to have a boyfriend. If you can make a comment about, like, what does your boyfriend say about, you know, you talking to men like this or something yeah. like that. And she's like, I don't have a boyfriend. Or she could say, oh, yeah, well, he's fine with it. He could, But that could ooh. be a bantering little I like flirt, that. too. But yeah. something like, like that. that. Also, yeah. If, also, you're, if you're very confused and you are putting your intentions out there, you, you could slip that in. What's your boyfriend say about that? Or you that. could just be like, oh, you have a boyfriend? Boyfriends are just like goalies. They just try to stop me from scoring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. No. 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 Wow. That's your second strike. No. <laughs> I feel like it might be three. I'm not sure. It's actually ten, but I think you're pretty loose. <laughs> you're pretty loose. All right. Um, so, I, I, I oh, think you have more. something else to add to that would be, but again, don't listen to me. Uh, but Get off the some, show then if they're not I supposed know, to listen I to know. you. I mean, don't listen to me, but. Something like... Um, you know, a girl, like, I don't know the way to not girl. be cheesy. No, don't say girl. But someone, <laughs> girl, don't, don't be like Mo. You got a boyfriend. Don't be like Mo. Something to the extent of like, <laughs> you know, there's no, I haven't found a lot of girls around like you that aren't taken. And kind of like lead it from there to see Ooh. if she might respond. That's like what I say when people say that they're from Los Angeles. I'm like, oh, you're rare. Like things like that. Right. Like, oh, it's very right. rare to meet a, a girl a girl like you who's not taken. Or some, you know, something, something like, like that. Maybe you guys could listen to that. That wasn't too bad. That no, was that was good solid. advice. Thank that you. was pretty good advice. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's good. All right. So Mina, hopefully that will provide you with your shit filter um, for t- seeing if women are married. And they may also just be saying that to you, to be honest, because they're not interested. Yeah. If they say they're married and they're not wearing a ring, they're probably lying. Right. That's yeah. true. True, because yeah. yes, that's there's no true. tan line. On <laughs> exactly. <the finger. laughs> yeah. exactly. All right, this one is from Daniel. Um, oh, from Sheffield, England. The, the Brits love us. Love the Brits. I love Daniel. the Brits too. So mm-hmm. I get it completely. I had no idea Brits would need help with the stuff because of their voices. I know. Yeah. All, here, instance. here's a, advice to any person who lives in the UK with a British accent: move to the US, and you will never have a problem again with yep. women. <laughs> Except my next door neighbor um, just moved in. He's British. And he is seeing a girl who um, apparently likes to sleep with guys that take her on trips. And I don't think he can do that because I hear them speaking every night at like 2 a.m. Love the British British accent until 2 a.m. Then the cutoff. And, just like- and then it's just an annoying voice. Wait, go on. She sleeps with guys to go on trips? Yeah, I mean, she was just, this is Los Angeles, so you have a lot of that kind of stuff. Basically, they're always on the balcony discussing like their relationship, and she's just saying, you know, it took a lot for me to stop like this habit I've had for the past 10 years of dating guys for what they can give me. And so... Clearly, he can't give her much because she's saying, like, now I've changed my ways. Right. But she's like, you know, I would go to Cancun, but she's like, but then I just am so sick of having to fake orgasms for a week. And I'm like, oh, my God, this girl. <gasps> oh, wow. That wow. is exhausting, though. Wait, are you and your guys. boyfriend just, like, on the balcony open. below with popcorn listening to this conversation? That's a lot to listen my to. My boyfriend's sleeping, like, spread, spread eagle with his mouth open. And, I, <laughs> and I'm just annoyed and, like, videotaping it on my phone to play for him in the morning. Check it out on our Vine. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? To all our women listeners that are, that are banging for a trip out there, l- listen up, sweetheart. One of these days, your looks are going to run out. And this selfishness that you've used to get you as far as it has, you're going to become burned I think that's why she's dating this guy now. Well, well, let's talk about this. So if she does do it while she's super hot and she gets a free trip, is that a bad thing? I don't think so. Look, I, think look, I don't think so either. I, I don't think she's if, – if you're not using them for – I mean, if you have a good time and you're dating them and whatever, they want to take you to Paris, then fucking the guy. I mean, I think she, she The guy's using her. She was using them, oh. right? I, I, I've seen enough girls <laughs> in L.A. that once they hit their mid-30s and they're washed up – like, hey now! No one's touching them. Careful. And it and it's because Careful, Mo. no, 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 no. I, I'm I'm saying it's, it's mid thirties. No one has washed no, up. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Look, I'm just saying there are these girls in L. A. that have used. They they've been so young and beautiful for so long. They've used men for their beauties, and then what they realize is those men that that they go after are no longer interested in them once they're at that age because those guys are still going for young twenty year olds. And then when they look for a guy with substance, they don't even know how to accept it. That's like it's my delayed gratification is like waiting to get old enough to see those girls and what they look at 45. Like, Your yeah. last 40 years yeah. were a waste. Yeah. It's like happening, though. Blast, I feel like honestly. even now at our age, I'm like, oh, yeah. Like it's happening. You're kind of a smile. bitch back then. You're still kind of a bitch. But <gasps> I, I do that know. with girls in high school. I'm like, you're fat now. You are not. You're like, yeah. like, like bitchy girls. <laughs> yeah. I know you get happy. Well, let's. It's the okay. greatest revenge. I, I want to hear wow. what Bruin has to say about this. Like, have you ever dated a guy because of what he can do for you or, or give you? No. 
No. No. No, I date people who make less money than me usually, and, like, I help and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe if they fix heart. my car. That's, good yeah, well, that's, that's a, just nice a masculine thing. thing. <laughs> but you were saying before, you were sick of guys just, like, talking about what they have. Yeah. Like, I oh, don't, I've got this and this and this. Yeah, I fucking, I hate it. You can swear. Swear five times in a row. Yeah, I, I hate when people talk about themselves the entire time, like, on a date. Like, oh, I make so much, like, I'm on, I used to be on OkCupid, okay and that's what people would be like, oh, I can take you out here. I'm like, I don't care, now I don't yeah. want to talk to you, yeah. and you're blocked. Yeah, and right. I mean, that's the general consensus. So guys, don't, don't brag. Show her what you can do. Don't talk. It's kind of like there's this apartment have. complex on my street, and it says ultra luxurious, and it's like hideous, right? <laughs> so it's <laughs> they like, always are. It's kind of like that. Has one on Pico as well, further, and I'm, and I'm like, Ew. and it's like, it has a spa. Yeah, like, if you're saying that you're ultra luxurious or that you can do these things, then obviously it's gonna take away from not. it that you you don't. Right. So you Ooh, know, that was good a point. Good little Just saying. good note, Haley. True that. All right, let's get let's get to uh, British Daniel's question from Sheffield, England. I'm not relationship driven in life. And have no problem being a single guy. But my question is, how am I supposed to, as a young, uh, wait, as you guys put it, open up and be sensitive around women when I have nothing to be, to open up about and be sensitive about? Short of dragging up sob stories that I've been at peace with for years, I'm totally okay with where I am emotionally right now. I feel like it may be putting women off because they feel like they aren't getting to know the real me. When the truth is, the real me is actually quite shallow now. Should I try <laughs> and get my heart broken to be more attractive to women? What's your advice? I love you. You sound just like Larry David. Larry David. I, know. I feel like he's super blocked off, though. I mean, obviously, yeah. he went yeah. through some traumatic stuff, and he's like, I don't have to... You don't have to open all of that stuff up, Daniel, to be emotionally available. You yeah. don't have to go into whatever happened to you. You can still be a sensitive guy, but clearly no one really at the end of the day is super shallow. Maybe some people are shallow. And, and but. Daniel, listen to our episode when women are DTF, which where Adam Gilad comes on and he gives great advice on, yeah. on who... Down to fuck. Oh, when, right. Yeah, when girls are DTF. He gives great advice on opening up isn't, oh, my sob story from here. It's mm -hmm. sharing with the woman what you're passionate about. Yeah. What gets you Be the you roller going. coaster they want to get on or be the ride they want to go yeah. on. Yeah. What drives you every day? Those things that are charged by emotion within you that are in your everyday life. Not, not what hurts you from the past. Right. Even, uh, yeah, a good way, even a good way to open up is if you see a movie that's a very uh, poignant film or something, just, just discuss that. Show like the three you, amigos. Exactly. <laughs> There's so much depth there. You got right, take so it down excited. a notch. <laughs> don't don't put, don't shit on my three amigos. I will. For me, it's I will get Bob. revenge on all of you. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. Like you can even share about it. Share about like okay, I used to watch the Three Amigos yeah. when I was younger. Share like, about it was... why you loved it. What about it makes you feel? You know, because you do feel as shallow as you are. Believe me, I'm very shallow sometimes, but I feel a lot. <laughs> well, this yeah, whole so. email to us was about what he's feeling. He's feeling confused. He's feeling frustrated. Yeah. He wants to know. You, you're not a shallow person if you want to know how to actually be sensitive and emotional with a woman. And actually, what Kristen just said about the tell her why that's so important to women. So. So um, in one of my programs, How to Become a Man Women Want, I talk about the wor word because. And the word because is so magical because it gets you to inject emotion into your conversation, whether or not you want it to. Because no matter what it makes you think about why you're saying something. So anytime that you make a statement when you're out with a woman, say because, and then it will open up to Add the why behind why you're saying it, injecting emotion and a little bit of sensitivity. Um, so I, I don't think you're a shallow person, unless you're just like a. You might be. I have no idea. Unless but from you're this American email, psycho. yeah, I don't think so. From this email, you do not seem like a shallow person at all, Daniel. But uh, thanks for for writing in this question. It was great. Okay, one more. Do we have enough time? Yeah, keep going. Why not? All right. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Let's keep going. All right. Okay. This is a little longer. Uh, hello, lovely ladies and Mo. I have been listening to you guys for a while now, and I really enjoy your show. Recently, I have resumed talking to my ex-fiance. We were together for over two years, and I was the one who ended the relationship. As I said, we have started talking again after a year of nothing, and I've asked her out for a date. She seems worried but accepted as she still has feelings for me as well. Uh, the date is set for two weeks from now. My issue is I want something we can do to rekindle that flame and start us over in the right place place the relationship didn't end well last time we were both very much to blame with communication being one of our problems i would welcome thought suggestions or anything with uh with what to do other than asking about what she has done over the last year i al i know already pretty much everything about her so what do i talk about you just enjoy each other you just have fun you if you do if you if both of you have the intention and you're hanging out to 
possibly get back together, yeah. uh, y- you can have fun, and then you can talk about what did happen in your relationship. If that's your intention. I, You know, I had a guy who just went through this right now, uh, and he hung out with a girl. He just broke up with a new girlfriend and started hanging out with an old girlfriend. And automatically he tried to rekindle it on the first day. Well, he said she still has feelings for me as well. That, and, and look, and, this, so gr- and this, girl, this girl came into the date thinking, wow, this is really sweet. We can, you know, rekindle our old flame. So it was all set up. But then he was like holding her hand, like trying to fall back into the old pattern. Oh, these are the take. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. This is a brand new thing. Treat her like a brand new girl that you want to impress. So then you could have some new memories that are a lot more positive than your old ones. And don't be afraid to take it slow, like Mo said. I mean, there's something kind of special about going home at the end of the night and like wondering, you know, who's like who's going to text next or what's going to happen yeah. next, you know? Yeah. Well, that's it. But, okay, so the only thing I'm not clear on is if, is his intention. He said that he ended it. So I'm guessing he still has feelings too that he wants to explore. Mm-hmm. But if or, he ended it he's, and uh, he's just like, oh, I miss her yeah. and sort yeah. of lonely, I would be very careful the, with the that. The thing that kind of scares mm-hmm. me about something like that is like, okay, we took a year apart and we didn't find anyone better. Right. So, and we didn't work on anything. We don't really know what the issues were or how to work on them. Right. However, I will be the devil's advocate. I had a friend who was in a relationship and it was like kind of a nightmare roller coaster. They ended up moving in together, didn't work, they moved out, they lived their life separately for a year and they realized, wow, we really just were in a bad time of our lives and they actually yeah. ended up now yeah, moving in together. Important. And so I do think if maybe for him, if he was in a weird time in his life and they both were, that could change everything. However, if he just wants to like have that companionship, obviously yeah. that's really and, that territory. To and, and look, man, I'm I'm a good example of this. I broke up with my girl like six or seven times. Some of the times it was a year. I banged, changed in between it all. Had a great time. I wish I did it that way. But what I'm trying to, what, what he needs to understand Ten strikes, is, Mo. look, she's the same person she's always been. And so are you. At the core, it's always, it's how it is. So those same problems you had before, problems that are going to still be there, unless you're willing to address those problems yeah. event, which I did with my girl in some couple therapy and that shit helped yeah. just to get an outside perspective of the shit totally I does. do you know unless you're willing to do something like that buddy just know those same problems are going to come up again and then when the going gets tough if you're not tough enough to go through it you guys are going to end up breaking up again. It's going to be a cycle and all that shit. It's a domino effect. And thanks to therapy, I also know this. But it's like if you continue doing the same thing, you're never going to break the chain. But if you choose to have a new pattern that you create, then that can help to change. Yeah, things. I For think sure. looking back on to maybe what, you know, what your dates were like the first time around. Were they great? I'm sure, you know, they were good because you guys stayed together. But is there something that you wish you had uh, you had done or, yeah. you know, a, do you have a do over. So really think, take a hard look at what went on when you first started dating last time and yeah. what can you change this time? I honestly think when they get back together after a year apart, it might be weird at first. And then they're going to they're going to click back into their old fun yeah. ways and it won't be like a heavy conversation. He's, you know, concerned about re- rekindling. And as Mo said, like, don't focus on rekindling. See if it's something you actually want now that yeah. you're meeting face to face. And if it is something where you're like, you know, what, I do want to get back together. I think that's when you have a conversation. It doesn't have to be on that first date, but it's. It's a, it's on that next conversation about like, you know, I do want to give this another shot after hanging out with you. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, don't rush and there's, it. there's still something there, but I know that we had issues in the past. So let's try to talk with them. Are, are there things that have changed in both of you? Have you both learned something new or have you both done work separately on your own? I think you have to figure out how you both have grown because if you're the same people, as you guys were saying, you can't go back into that yep. same relationship. There has to be something altered or at least yeah. like aha moments for both of you. And then hopefully she slept with a couple other guys and learned some moves. Oh God! <laughs> and Broom, what do you think? Um, I I don't ever rekindle anything. I think it's a bad thing because I'm just. I always think that it's just going to be a cycle again. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's valid. I would, I would just personally, I would just leave it and let it be. Oh, but that's that's very mature. True very that. mature. I like no. it. Oh, okay. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, or? keep going. God. You know what? We're, We're on a roll control. right now, so let's just go. Mo is just enjoying <laughs> sitting the way he's sitting, I know. so he doesn't feel like moving. Oh, this that's is, why the, last, this so is the last one I had for today. Okay, so my name is Jack, and I've been a fan of your show lately as it really makes the hours of my admin job a lot more bearable. Yeah. My, I love it. My weekend job gig is that um, of a male stripper. 
It's weird because I have no problem approaching women in that environment to ask them for lap dances and well tips. The problem is I have a tough time transitioning that confidence on my own time when I'm wearing my own clothes, not some ridiculous costume thong. This issue has followed me around since my rookie year with pubes and has seemed to intensify even more as of late due to a D... What is this? More initials. I don't know. D W A. I, hence is, handicap. What is that? What the DWI? Is it what? But there's an A there. It's starting to derail after pubes for me. Drinking <laughs> while angry and, and intoxicated. Something. <laughs> hence handicapping me for my liquid courage. Okay. So something where you can't drink. Uh, any advice from you gals and guys? Uh, and I'll be an appreciative man. I completely understand what you're going through. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. We yeah. have a suicide girl She's here. Yeah. 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 I'm so confident in like naked all the time on the internet. Like when I meet someone in person i don't i don't have game at all um I, yeah because you do come across semi-shy yeah yeah, yeah I and she's yeah, clothed but you, you're yeah, clothed but you still i'm i i, I, I haven't seen pictures but i'm good. sure you're like yeah <laughs> really if i was naked i'd be well, like go, go anyway guys. don't go there <laughs> don't go where well, you're gonna go if it's, it's like that well kind of if that's what happens oh, let's see the no, confidence i think the i think the main thing that i try doing is if you are interested i always i make sure to if I see someone at a bar, I'll go back to that bar. I won't go up to them the first time. I'll go back to that bar, and hopefully I run into them. And luckily, every time that I've gone back to a bar, I've seen the person again. And Have you had to talk yourself into it to build oh, up your confidence? Absolutely. And then I take, like, two shots right before, but then I'm like, so, buddy. And you right. approach. Yeah, but then they usually notice me by that time because I'm at the bar again and drunk. getting drunk by myself <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> yeah, on the bar. Like you better save this yeah. girl. Okay, yeah. so what do we have to say for Jack then? Okay, Because it's, it's like leading a double life, right? Yeah. Like for yeah. me, when I first started doing what I was doing, um, I, I went into relationship conversations when I was uncomfortable because that's where I was really confident. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with using that as a tool, but I, I relied on that for a little bit. What do you mean by relationship conversations? Um, cause of what I do, right? Okay, you so if coaching. I meet new people, like either I would start coaching or I would Got bring it. up what I do. Cause that was the, com the comfort level for me. Yeah. And then after a while I was like, mm, I don't want to be a therapist to people. I, cause then I don't know how to steer the conversation elsewhere, even though that built up my confidence. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to rely on that. It's not wrong or bad to go into that area of whatever your expertise is. But as a stripper, you can't like to suddenly start stripping. In, right. You know, when you're <laughs> well, at like Whole Foods. I, I used to be. I was a bartender for a long time, and my bartender character was. This, I'm not surprised. This fun. It was like Tom Cruise from Cocktail. Okay, like in your head. I'm, I'm just saying, like <laughs> as a bartender, <laughs> Can you, you picture that. <laughs> I was just like shaking that shit. But in the real life, you see people like staring. What? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but the, there's a confidence you get from bartending for sure and but then, did it transfer over not you know, for me it did it at first and then i realized look we are characters in different aspects and in different relationships in our lives he needs to understand that his character his stripper character is a character right and it's also and, part of him and it's a part of him and then this this unconfident guy when he goes out is also a character, and that character is not doing him any justice. Right. So whether he needs to wear a thong below his normal clothes, That's what I was thinking, or Ooh. whether he needs to bring something with him that reminds him of the club that puts him in that relaxed atmosphere again, he needs to channel that person. Oh, I'm taking nipple, away a strike just from him. That under, was good. Like under your shirt, just wear nipple clamps. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> areola tassels. Same thing. Kind well, of. actually, that's really interesting what you you were saying because okay, think about when you first become a stripper. I'm sure you. You weren't completely confident doing that. You had to build up your skills. So now it's about you know applying those same rules of practicing to to your real world. And it's and, about pushing yourself and starting at square one. And mm -hmm. it's also understanding that w when you're in your stripper clothes and you're in that environment, the women that are there are also in character. Yeah. Because yeah. any other place, they would not let you swing your wang <laughs> in their face. <laughs> How long have you been waiting to say that? <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> so just remember that we're all human and that everyone else is feeling insecure as well and and that different environments affect people differently so you wouldn't walk you don't want to have honestly you don't want to have the same confidence in the real world that you do in the strip club but you want to have some confidence you but, know but you don't yeah, want to over put it out there yeah, try, right. try to channel that that virtual wang swinging yeah. in their faces you know in a, in a and, positive and just know that the women way. are probably shy as well so you can feel comforted that you're all in the same boat in that moment yeah. for sure
And go check out my program, How to Become a Man Women Want, because it actually <laughs> gives you, I'm going to plug Shameless. the shit out of myself. Um, yeah, go check it out because it, it actually gives you steps on how to overcome approach anxiety and, and build your confidence uh, with interacting, approaching, starting conversation and breaks it down into little itty bitty steps so it doesn't feel and so overwhelming. I believe, I actually, I believe I saw his um, Facebook profile. Uh, you did? Yeah, because I saw that question. I don't know. I don't, that sounds creepy. Was I, it, was I, his I, Facebook you, right? name Magic Jack? Him. <laughs> no, that's your name, Mo. <laughs> um, and I, I saw his profile, and he's a very attractive guy. So, you know, and that's so he's that got matters. He's a male stripper. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah he's exactly. Tra- he's yeah, probably got a true. six pack. He's looking good. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. bring the character oh, out one wait night a and have fun. And I don't know if you said, I don't Maybe know how I, I know that, who but. this is. Oh, is this the person who had the selfie with his abs? Who does that Pro- to me? Probably. Ooh, Where he wrote to me, he's like, how does this look to others? I'm like, well, 25 to 35, you'd be a douchebag player under 25 yep. play ball right. it's amazing and, and another thing that Adam said dudes don't take selfies women yeah. take selfies dudes take yeah. pictures at the beach playing volleyball making their abs look good idiots <laughs> take selfies the thing is I Agreed. take selfies but I don't post them like my entire phone <laughs> picture catalog oh. are selfies but I, like, I, yeah, like, I demonstrate self-restraint and I do not post them unless it's like absolutely gorgeous I post some <laughs> weird ones if I'm doing something <laughs> weird that's awkward but if I'm like sitting in the couch I'm like I wonder what, what I look like with a double chin and I will like have a whole series right. of the weirdest fucking pictures yeah, but yeah. No that you send out oh, that no, yeah, they no. never see yeah until Anyways. someone finds your cell phone that's my dun, last dun, question dun. I didn't think we were gonna have time for much more oh, oh, so that's done but that is the end of analyze, analyze this. this and guys girls whoever whatever you are um if you want to write in questions to us that we will answer live on air and we need some girls oh, so yes, don't be girls. shy ladies write in we want to hear from yeah, you we got advice yeah. from you too so it's ask at askwomenpodcast.com you can follow us on twitter at askwomenpodcast yeah. What else? Please follow us on Twitter um, because it makes us look way cooler. Oh, it totally does. We actually have a lot of listeners, and then like someone logs onto our Twitter and they're like, like "Who is this? Two hundred people yeah. like you? Yeah, exactly." So and follow oh, us on Twitter. Yes. Wait. Shoot. What else was I going to say? Oh, and yes, a new podcast comes out every Thursday. And if you do want to contact us, we usually record our show. Uh, what time? Tuesdays. At Tuesdays. Eleven thirty. At eleven thirty now. 12. Is that right? Eleven thirty. Well, we're going to post it on our Twitter. So follow us. Okay. And yes. Huge and we'll let you know. Thanks to Bruin today from Suicide. Girls, yeah. where can people find you at? Uh, Bruin at suicide. Uh, Bruin suicide on Instagram. That's awesome. It. What Bruin happens suicide. if you actually kill yourself? I what? Oh god, I'm this is a happy. suicide suicide. But are girl. there any like suicide girls you think would actually kill themselves? No. Kristen, no, no, no. That's not Kristen, I'm no gonna kill you comment. after the show. No, that's not a weird question. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Tune in next week. We will have another amazing guest, and uh, thanks. We love hearing from you, so keep on sending in your tweets, you guys. We love reading all of them. And don't miss out on the chance to take our very important listener survey at podcastone.com. Your responses will help us make this show the very best it can be. It only takes about three minutes of your time and will help you get get the instant gratification that comes with knowing you helped us out. We will love you for is what we're saying. You can tell us how you really feel about the show and how to help us get to know you better. So do it now. Take the survey at podcastone.com. That's podcast O-N-E dot com and keep those tweets coming because we love you so very much. Thanks. This concludes another podcast one dot com program.